Okay, I had a shop send me a 2011 Toyota Tundra and he reported that it's got a low brake pedal and he's tried everything that he could think of in order to correct it. Okay, whether you step on the pedal once or if you hit it two or three times, it is just simply traveling too far. Now he's bled the brakes, he's put a master cylinder on it, you know, he, he gives me a whole grocery list of things that he's done. One of the things that I asked him when I was talking to him is, did he take his scan tool and try closing the isolation valves to see if he could identify if it was one particular wheel or not? And he told me that he hadn't tried that and he'd give that a go. Well, then he called back a couple days later and he was unsuccessful trying to do that. Apparently his scan tool didn't support that function. So what I'm going to do real quick is confirm is it in fact just one wheel? Okay, this is a pretty tough shot to get. But what I'm doing is I'm stepping on the brake pedal and I'm seeing how much travel we have. I'm going to start the engine. Okay, so we got the scan tool hooked up. I uh, got the vehicle identified and one of my first steps is just going to isolate each individual wheel so I can find out is this an entire system or really is this low brake pedal problem just about one wheel. So we're going to go into diagnostics, I'm going to go control unit, ABS, go into active test, and we got two pages of testing that we can do. I'm just going to pick one of the hold solenoids. As it says, the test only lasts two to five seconds. So when I turn this on, you should hear the valve click. And if you're stepping on the brake pedal, no fluid will go to that wheel. If I have selected the wheel that has the problem, the brake pedal will not stroke down until the test stops. Once the test stops, then the pedal will drop like it was previously. So I'm going to give you some samples about how far the pedal is traveling. So now what you want to do is bleed the vacuum off. And they're always going to ask you how much data do you want. We're just going to tell it all the data. It doesn't really matter for this. We're really only concentrating on the test itself. And you can see ABS solenoid, right front solenoid hold. Listen for the valve. Okay, could you hear the click? That's all it does. It's about two seconds in length. I'm going to do it again. And you should be able to hear each valve in the ABS unit operate. Then, after that two to five second window, the test stops. And if the problem is in that wheel circuit, the pedal will drop. You'll see that we're going to do this several times. And I'm going to turn on that right front solenoid again. I hit the pedal. And did you see the pedal release? I'm going to do that a second time. I turn the solenoid on, hit the pedal, and then when the computer releases the solenoid, the pedal drops. So I'm going to escape from the right front, and I'm going to go into the left front solenoid. So same routine, I'm going to turn the solenoid on, step on the pedal, and you only saw a little bit of movement right at the very end. I'll do it again. There. Escape here, and let's do the left rear solenoid hold. Same thing, 
very little pedal movement when it releases. Now one more time, let's go back to the right front. Hold firm pedal and then it goes down. I hope this helps you sometime in the future. Keep in mind, the more autonomous features that we have on the cars beyond just traction control and stability control, when we start having the automated braking systems, the car has to be able to apply the brakes itself. That base ABS system has to work correctly in order for the ATIS to work. So again, like I said, I hope this helps and we'll look for any, any other information in the comments.